Hello, I'm Atsubo George and I'm so glad for this opportunity given by God for me to bring his truths to you. I pray the Spirit of God will open the eyes of your understanding right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that every body be lifted from your heart. Everything that causes you distraction from receiving God's word, I command it to leave you now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread before going to today's broadcast? Say with me, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread it's coming to me now from you lord in jesus name amen praise god i declare over your life you will not be broke you will not be broke you will not be broke in jesus name money is coming to you now yes thank you lord jesus hallelujah praise god Glory. So, so we are talking about the man who God blesses. Listen, you are that man. So how do I know? See, the word of God will not come to you if he has not chosen you to be blessed. These words will make no sense to you if he has not chosen. But if you are receiving this word, you are not receiving it by chance. Jesus said, no man comes to me except my father who sent me draws him. The fact that you're still listening to me right now means God is drawing you. And that's why you're listening. And so pay now pay attention to what I'm sharing with you so that the fullness of the blessing will come because you are the one God has chosen to bless. Praise God. Oh, glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so excited in my heart because I, I, I can stand here and see how much your life is about to change. <laughs> how? By the things I'm sharing with you. Oh, if you're just listening to me right now, hey, go listen from Monday. Go on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our page and put the, the notification button on. Yeah, because you need to go, go listen from Monday. It will bless you, I'm telling you. It will bless you. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. And I shared with you yesterday on how, how to get things from God. I use a car as an example, but it's the same way. Now, let me go further in, in sharing. Okay, so... You talked about the person who had the money. Maybe the money was for something else. Yeah, what if I don't have any money at all? It's the same principle. It's the same principle. Now, because you had money, so God borrowed your money from you. That's what he did. The Bible says anyone who gives lends to the Lord. Anyone who gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Now, who's the poor? You may ask, who's the poor? The poor is the one in need. The poor is not necessarily the one who has not eaten for days. The poor is not necessarily the one who doesn't have a job. The poor is the one who God identifies as have need. You understand that? Oh, yeah, that's the poor. So when God commands you to give, you are lending to him. That's what you're doing. You're lending to him. And what you lend to him, he surely will pay you back. So that's why I told you yesterday that you didn't pay for a car. You borrowed God money. And then he's going to pay you that money back. Remember I said that to you yesterday. He will surely pay you that money back. Now, okay, I don't have money. What do I do? I'll tell you the same thing. Now, you've asked God for the car. And, and let me tell you, this is the beauty of faith. Faith places no limitation. Faith places no limitation. The quality of blessing faith is going to give to a PhD holder is the same quality of blessing faith is going to give to a, what do you call it now? A first school living holder. You know what I mean? First school living, primary school. He ended school at primary level. Or maybe he didn't go to any school at all. Maybe he doesn't even speak English. 
Say that now. But the same quality faith is going to produce to the one who went to Harvard. It's the same quality faith is going to produce to the one in the village who gets faith. See, if he can receive this understanding in his local diet and put it to work, I'm telling you the quality of his result will be the same quality of the result of the man who is highly educated. That's the thing about faith. He's not a respecter of anybody. God is not a respecter of persons. See that now? That's why Paul says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of grace. Because God does it by grace. He does it by grace. And it's true faith. Now that's where your own responsibility comes in. Faith. Faith is you responding to what God has said. You can hear all those things and say, hmm, hmm, okay, well, that's for those people who are, uh, well, that's your choice. But you can hear this and say, hey, why don't I start putting these things to work? Why don't I start practicing this lifestyle? It's a lifestyle. It's not just because I need a car, so I'll do it. No, you do it, you succeed where car is concerned. Move to the next level, get a house. Move to the next level, get, get, get fees, get your bills paid. Move to the next level, get everything about your life should be working by this principle. So, okay, I don't have a car, what should I do? I don't have the money, I don't have any money at all. What should I do? You've asked the Lord, yes. You, you're patiently waiting, yes. So what's going to happen? Now, because you don't have the money, there are either of two things God is going to do. Put the money in your hands or He will bring that car to you or whatever it is you've asked. He can speak to someone's heart. Someone will just call you and say, Hey, I don't know, I've been praying about this and I'm sure the Lord have laid it in my heart to give you a car. So just like that, oh, oh yeah, just like that. You say, um, but I'm not a pastor. Now. It's only pastor that does things. Who told you it's only for pastors? No, it's not only for pastors. It's for those who ask the Lord. You have asked God and God is your father. He's as much your father as he is the pastor's father. So if you believe that it came to that pastor by his faith, then you should believe that it can come to you by your faith. Uh, but, you know, pastor, because pastor preaches, so people, no, no. I've proved that in my life. That is not because of preaching that God gives us things. Now, when we preach, we obey him. So he gives us the reward of, his, of obeying him. But see, the life we live is not just the preaching obedience. It is the daily obedience. Now, when you obey God daily, you will see the same results. You will see the same results. I'm telling you the truth. You will have the same testimony. So God can, can, now two things, if God is not saying, but nobody knows me, he can cause you to be known by the only person that needs to know you. He can. You can just show up somewhere and God have spoken to somebody and say, look, there's someone I want you to give a card to. So who? Because there are people who are listening to the Lord. Now, that's why you should join them. If every one of us begin to join the people who listen attentively to what God is saying, I'm telling you the truth. We are going to all begin to walk in this thing with so less effort. So, so someone will hear an instruction. I'll, I'll, I'll bring someone to you today. And that person, when he comes, you'll give him the car. You remember it happened to Samuel in the Bible. God spoke to Samuel and said, by this time tomorrow, a young man is going to come to you. And when that young man comes, anoint him to be king. Now, God didn't go to Saul and say, Hey, you, you're going to be anointed as king. So go and look for someone. No. Saul was keeping his father's flock. The, the, the sheep got missing. The ass got missing, excuse me. And then he told, he began to look for it with his servant. And somehow they began to check this place, check that place. And they found themselves in the village where Samuel was. And at that point, Saul said, um, Saul said, you know what, let's go back because I know my dad. He's not going to be looking for this ass again. He's going to be looking for me. And the servant said, but before we go, 
let's look for a prophet in this place. I've heard of a prophet in this place. Now, when did he hear of that prophet? He heard of that prophet some time back. Now, you see, there was a reason he heard of that prophet that day. Now, it is being put to use today. Are you following me? Now, this is how God works. And, 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 and Saul said, ah, but, but we don't have anything. If you see a prophet, we're supposed to give you an offering. And the servant said, um, let me check my bag. Oh, I, I've got some money. Let's, let's at least we have something to give. Because that was the reasoning then that you don't just see the seer without dropping something. <laughs> it's good. Not that the seer would ask. It's just a reasoning. Because they were blessed people. See that? Now? They were blessed people. So that was their mindset. So they found themselves before Samuel. And the moment Samuel saw so, the Lord said to him, that's the man I told you about. Saul didn't know what was going on. Saul just said, please, um, I heard you are a seer. Can you tell us where our ship, our ass is? And you know the whole story. Now, it's the same way God can command somebody. Like, hey, someone is coming to see you tomorrow. When he comes, he, you will give him that car that I told you about. Mm. Mm. So, Lord, you really mean it? I should give out this car? Yes. Mm. Okay, Lord, I will obey. Now, you, you, are, you are doing your own thing. And then you go somewhere and your friends say, Hey, um, please, I want to go submit this application somewhere. Come, 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 come and follow me now. Like, mm, okay, let's go. And then you follow. Now, you don't know this person. I mean, I mean, the person that God has spoken to. And then you follow. And then you get there. Say, oh, no, no, come, come, come. Let's go inside now. I'm a side, come, come, come. And then you go inside and you, you step in. You meet someone. Hey, 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 meet my boss. Like, oh, wow. Like, good day, sir. Good day, sir. How are you? Like, oh, who's that? Oh, that's my friend, you know, like, oh, is he looking for a job yet? And then you're like, ah, no, no, I, I, I'm not looking for a job. You're like, like wow, why did he say, I don't want to work here with us? I said, no, but I just didn't apply. Now, you think you are just communicating, you're, you're just gisting. You don't realize that, and, and he's asking you all, now, he's not asking the one who brought an application. He's stunned to you and he's asking you all these questions. And like, so, um, why are you behaving as though you can't work in this place? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to say that, you know, well, except God commands me to, 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 to work here. Said, what do you mean, except God commands? So, you can't see a good place. Said, no, I have to wait for God to tell me what to do. Like, oh, okay. Ah, you're a Christian. Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Wow, you, you, you believe in the Holy Spirit? Of course I believe in the Holy Spirit. I say, oh, wow, I, I, I believe in the Holy Spirit too. Oh, wow, oh, praise God. Hey, now, now we're talking. And while that communication is going on, he hears, this is the person I commanded you to give the card to. Okay. And then he begins to battle it in his heart, because that's what happened. Am I hearing myself, or is this the Lord really talking to me? And then the Lord said, here's the one. I want you to give your card. <laughs> Sometimes you may even fight it until you go. And then you leave. Now you're wondering, why did I even go there? Well, thank God I met the owner of the company. I met the boss. I met the whatever. You know. And then this man cannot sleep. And then they say, hey, come. Next day he calls the office. There is that guy that brought, brought an application here yesterday. Yeah? Can you get me his phone number? And he get the phone number and he calls. He's like, hello. Yeah, um, you came with your friend yesterday. Oh, he, oh yes, yes. That's what I was talking to. Yes. Um, can you tell him to come see me? Um, Savo, it's me that applied for. Oh, don't, no, no, no. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's for something else. Okay. So, hey, friend. That guy is calling me. And this is not wishful thinking. I'm telling you things that God has done before. And because he's done it before, he's ready and willing to do it again. And you show up in that place. Say, hey, I know I just met you yesterday, but this is the truth. God said I should give you. And then you're wondering, I just met you. I don't know you. Ah, woohoo! And you share your own part of the story with him. 
I've been believing God for a car and God spoke to me that he has given me the car and I've been wondering where it's going to come. Now I know. And then he said, oh, I see. So we are just part of God's family doing God's business. Now, before that happened, the patience was working. And you, first of all, received from the Lord. He telling you, I will give you the car. Now, all this operation that just happened, happened from the wisdom in the kingdom of heaven. My time is up, praise God. That that's how the kingdom of heaven operates. But it's this knowledge I'm sharing with you. It's something you believe. And why am I sharing these things with you? You settle it in your heart that all these are possibilities. I'm not sharing this with you so that you go and sit there and say, hmm, God, that's thing Pastor to say, it should just happen like that in my life. You know, I sit there and be thinking, yeah, I will call me now. Oh, no, no, that's not how it works. I'll share with you tomorrow how this thing actually works. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today. I, I pray that that which you seek will come to you today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.